Hi everyone, this is Laren. Um, I am starting this video log with the intention of discussing various things that I find uh, fascinating. I'm a big fan of Doctor Who, Tolkien, a uh, lot of science fiction, a lot of fantasy, video games, so you'll probably see a lot of different commentaries about things as time progresses. Um, as a Whovian, which is what I'm going to be discussing tonight, uh, my first doctor was Peter Davison. My first episode was Castro Valva, which was Peter's regeneration uh, episode. And that's where I got to kind of get the feel of like what the heck is going on with the personality because Castro Valva was one thing and then the next episode he was more sedate, better in character. And as time progressed, I got to realize that this is a standard thing for the doctor. So, you know, I was excited to see it when Eccleston turned into Tenet. And, uh, you know, it was a great thing to see as well as the writers acknowledging the fact that they had to, while creating a new character, still be faithful to the characteristics that showed up from Hartnell. So, I will admit, uh, probably going to get a little, you know, shame on you for this one. When the 13th Doctor was announced, my first thought was, what the heck are they thinking? Um, and it wasn't so much that it was a female Doctor, it was I was not pleased with the choice. Like most um, Whovians, I tuned into Broadchurch when it was aired on BBCA simply because David Tennant was in it. I enjoy Mr. Tennant's acting. He's pretty much everything I've seen him in, he's been phenomenal. So Jodie's character, I don't know if she just wasn't into the role or if it was a, a matter of writing. I was not, you know, just wasn't thrilled. I couldn't connect. And so I didn't get a really good feel for her acting talent. So when today's uh, episode, first episode of season 11, woohoo, um, when it aired, I was excited because, hey, new season for Doctor Who. I want to see what's going to happen. But at the same time, I'm like, I really, really hope that Miss Whitaker can deliver in such a role that has been so iconic for over 50 years. It's, it's a difficult challenge. And so I'm going to go through this without spoilers because I'm hitting the technical aspects tonight. Later, I'll come back and discuss the storyline once I'm fairly certain there's no, oh, well, at least not very many people who haven't seen this episode. So if you haven't seen it by that time, please don't look at that particular one until, you know, after you have, because I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay, so one complaint I've had about Doctor Who is the inconsistent writing. A lot of episodes have been absolutely phenomenal. And then there's others where I sat there and went, this doesn't make sense. Not at all. I mean, we've had wonderful ones like the 50th anniversary edition, the Day of the Doctor, which I, I still consider one of my favorites. And not because they actually managed to bring Tom Baker in when he wasn't available for the five doctors. So to me, when I heard that he was going to be there, I was just like, yes. So anyway, fangirl moment. Don't mind me. Uh... So, Season 11, Episode 1, Writers. I don't know if they got a whole new writing team or if they adjusted, but tonight's episode was, it flowed smoothly. Um, they were able to bring in this, all the aspects that make the Doctor the Doctor. There's the childlike component, there's the sneaky component, there's the compassionate area, and everything that makes him unique you know every time every actor has you know and on the writer team has pick it chose which one should be the more dominant and i i could see it tonight with jody and i don't know like i said i don't know if it was a combination of her the writing team and the director team but all i know is that this combination needs to continue and because she had a lot of gold mine lines tonight it. I'm looking forward actually to watching the next episodes because of that. I really like the fact that um, the companions for this episode were able to give her inspiration and nudge the doctor 
into the proper way, showing compassion for a person who obviously is still baking, <laughs> to quote one of the terms from a regeneration episode prior. So the writers have to be commended because there were no plot holes that I could determine, and I watched this episode twice today. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it was down to earth. There was, while there were manic points for the doctor, there was a chance to show instead of a Gallifreyan, we had a chance to see a little bit of the influence that the human companions have had on our favorite Time Lord over the years. So I found it to be amazing. As far as the acting wise is concerned, the companions definitely need a little bit more baking time as far as certain ones, but I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that this is a new group. It's become a team effort instead of doctor and companion. It's doctor with three companions, which I don't believe we've seen since Peter Davison. I may be wrong, but it's been a while since we've had that many people in the TARDIS. Um, closest we got to it was when Rory and Amy. So, yeah, it's a little... But I think it may, will make for some great chemistry in the future once they get settled into their particular roles. Uh, I enjoy the choices that were made for the companions, not just with ethnic diversity, but we also have age differences. We've got, you know, obvious background differences and a lot of it is representative of today's society. If you look about it, you know, what we've got a lot of inter, you know, interracial relationships and things of that nature. And while the British people have been a lot more progressive in this than the United States people have, it's wonderful to see. Um, I really love the interaction between the characters tonight, even with the so-called incidental character that wound up being more in, less incidental than we expected. You know, the doctor and Jody and the others, it was, it was encouraging to see, you know, you're not just the target of the week, you're actually somebody, and we're going to do our best for you, you know, so that was a really, really enjoyable factor, and of course, you've got the silly one-liners that pop up, that have been popping up since I started watching, and, uh, that's a nice, really nice, uh, really nice ad addition to to this particular season. Um, saw a glimpse of for the episode for next week, so I'm hoping as Jody settles into her role, we'll see a little bit more of a mix of I, I hate to say it, but a little bit more settled mix of what we expect from the Doctor, but with a different flair. Uh, one of the concerns I'd had with, I discussed with a friend of mine, is that we've had a character for 50 years that has been male. And I had to really, some years ago when I was reading, they were talking about the possibility of hiring a female actress. Um, I believe it was a comedian back in the 80s or 90s. And, um, but they decided against it. I don't know what, John Nathan Turner had been discouraged or something. I'm not sure. But... That's when I really had to stop and think about it, is while people perceive the Doctor as male, he's probably more gender fluid, and I hate to use the term he now since it's she, but I guess more gender fluid than people think about, because we have a person who, you know, when we were dealing with Matt Smith, he wasn't exactly... I guess it was the youth and the way he portrayed the energy, whatever. He never felt like he was comfortable in his own body. Uh, so, and that's when I'm, I'm actually going to start looking at it as that we have a person that is not set in a gender role so much. And I'm interested to see how Jody portrays this simply because we have... A time Lord who has been in a masculine form and now in a female form, how is it going to change the in physicality? How is it going to change, you know, as far as the approach? Because tonight when you were watching this, you know, she was absolutely astonished. The character was astonished that 
why are you calling me madam? It's like, because you're a woman. I am. And the only, the only comment she had was, how does it look on me? <laughs> does it suit me? That was, you know, I was waiting for the ginger comment, but obviously that didn't show up. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how the writers and Jody portray the swap from male to female, because we've gone from, you know, the doctor and Rose, from the doctor with hints of, you know, Amy having a crush on him, to Clara, to River, and I've never been a big fan of those, to be honest with you. I'm kind of on the John Nathan Turner side of things, no hanky-panky in the TARDIS. I'm an old-fashioned, old-fashioned Whovian when it comes to that, but it does, it does open up a variety of things in this and saying, all right, so how's the personal interaction going to be with the companions, with people around the doctor now, or even people who may have known him at one point. Um, I'm not completely caught up on season 10. (laughs) My DVD player died after I got uh, the DVDs for Christmas and uh, Life has not been calm enough for me to be able to stream it on Amazon, so I'm trying to catch up with that. But, you know, people like, if he were to run into Kate again, or even some of his older companions, you know, I want to see, I'd like to see how that changes relationships. And I'm hoping that the writers will feel the same way. And so we'll have to wait and see. Um, My thoughts on today, the episode, I think it was an impressive Uh, first episode for the new season. I think that we have a lot of expectations now in regards to how the writers, directors, and actors are going to handle this particular demand. Do I think they can do it? I do believe they can. Uh, It's just a matter of, you know, staying true to the path that they're set on and hoping that they remember to be true to the characters and to the ideals that have guided this fandom for 50 years. So I'm looking forward to next week's episode. I look forward to later this week when I can finally discuss the content of the episode without spoilers, as River would say. So I am going to log for the night and hope you guys enjoy the first episode. I look forward to discussing it with other peep fans and you guys to have a good night. I'll see you next episode.